My name is Maria Soroka and I'm one of the co-founders of Razum for Ukraine. And two weeks ago in early June, I went to Ukraine as part of the advocacy team's trip. Uh, we arrived in Kiev. Uh, we also spent some time in Kharkiv visiting our grantees and we ended our trip in Lviv. This was one of the most impactful trips for me. I'm from Ukraine. I've lived in Ukraine half of my life. I traveled to Ukraine twice a year. Uh, but this particular trip was extremely important for me to understand what is actually going on in Ukraine today after the beginning of the big war. This is year three. The resilience of people. And this is why it was important for me to go to Kharkiv. Kharkiv is the second largest city in Ukraine. Prior to the invasion of Russia, which happened in 2014, and then with the big invasion in 2022, Kharkiv had the largest population of students. This is a city of young individuals, professionals. The underground scene is absolutely amazing. The artists, filmmakers, young families. I've been in Kharkiv in 2017 and I did not want to leave. And that's why it was important for me to come back and see Kharkiv today after, I don't know, I, I lost track of days, but it's been, you know, over 900 days of, of bombing and shelling of that particular city. It was also important for me to see our grantees, and I know it sounds very official to call them grantees. They are our partners. They are the people on the front lines that are keeping the city alive because city is not buildings, city is people. If everyone leaves, there is no city. And it finally hit me because I am a mother and I have three kids. And I, when I would see women with little children walking on the streets of Kharkiv, I would question why you have an opportunity to leave. And I finally understood why after my trip because city is not the building, city is the people. If everyone leaves, there is no city. One of the coolest things we did in Kharkiv region, we went to Izum, and this is a city very close to the front line. And we went to Izum because we wanted to taste one of the best coffees made in Ukraine. There is this awesome coffee shop, it's called the Maker's Coffee, and they have been functioning as this high-class Brooklyn-style coffee shop with every possible plant-based milk you can find, including banana and coconut. 20 kilometers from the front line, and we went to see this coffee shop. Again, on the outside, it looks like a war zone. You open the door, it looks like Brooklyn. As you might imagine, 95% of their clients are uh, Ukrainian soldiers and they enjoyed this coffee and they deserve to have the best coffee. It was really cool to see that as an example of life goes on. And we, we as Ukrainians, we deserve good quality products, even on the front lines. So um, having that as an example uh, in the middle of all of the atrocities, um, not only gave hope, it was also extremely motivational to come back to the United States and talk about the fact that Ukrainians are not tired. That Ukrainians are spending every single minute contributing to the victory and to the, to the, the defense of Europe, really. It is very important right now for us as Americans to listen to Ukrainians, listen to them. They are on the front line, physically and mentally. I think it is important to understand that we live in two different realities. There is reality in the West, in the United States, where we live as American citizens, and there is a very different reality in Ukraine, where people are defending Europe. Today, United States and many people in the United States do not fear the Russian regime. They don't understand it, and they're not afraid of it coming close to their home. And I know it might sound dramatic, but that is the reality. And it's not here yet. 
but it is in Ukraine. Therefore, it is important to listen to Ukrainians. It's important to hear what they are saying because they are telling you about your future, the future of your children and the future of this country. For the past 10 years, Razum, without really realizing it, has built an enormous network of doers in Ukraine. These are the people of the new generation shaping modern Ukraine. These are people of my generation that were born in independent Ukraine, that had an opportunity to study abroad and bring the best of the Western culture and values to Ukraine and combined it with Ukrainian values. There is so much Ukraine has to offer to the world today. And that's what Razum is trying to highlight. We're collecting stories of Ukrainian activists and civil society leaders that are now investing their time in building institutions because activism is no longer sustainable in Ukraine. Now we're here to build for the long term. We're building a country and we're building stable, secure Europe for our children today.